obviously, like, no one knows that I do. Mm. I have a little olive oil bottle in my car. So if I have, if I have, I'm not hey, what? joking. Hey, Anthony, where'd you get this podcasting stuff from? It fell off the back of a truck. Welcome to the Breaking Bread Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Sal Valentinetti. How you doing? And since I like to call everyone by their Instagram name, we're here with Cooking with Maria Rosa. Yeah, and we're happy to have not just Greg behind the scenes today, but Ro. So you'll be hearing from everybody. Um, What do you guys think? Side note, I'm thinking about buying a Fiat. Like a company Fiat. Can I tell you something? With a small little wait, car. It's like six thousand bucks. Wait. Do you wait? Think I'm gonna fit. So that way, if someone needs a car, you I have a company call, car. I will call my mother right now. I was on the phone with her on the way in. Really? You know what I said to her? What? I love. I really cars. want a Fiat. Let's do it together, bro. Why? Do you think I'm gonna fit in a Fiat? I, I honestly <laughs> might do it. Fiat. I love Fiat. Company Fiat. I mean, if the roof. They opens, are so I can cute. The roof. That's so Italian, like. Can I be like the caretaker? Yeah, hundred percent. The caretaker. <laughs> I don't know. It just Joe Joe from Tuto Calcio just gave me gave me the idea. He goes, they're dirt cheap. Like I'm he, here in my head, I'm thinking like twenty. Maybe grand Sharada PR about. should sponsor my Fiat. <clears throat> sure. So we get the hot one, the Abarth, right? And then we put the old school wheels and Vogue. Ti- we'll have we'll have Lee Adams send us the Vogue tires, right? That'd be cool. Could we do that on a cat uh, on a on a Fiat? Can we make a convertible? Oh, wheels? And fucking fit in it can be done. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sit fetal can, position, can we Greg. Make a convertible one so I can fit in it. They have, they have the convertible, but Greg, you could fit in it. I mean, if you open the, I fit, I fit roof. with Ruth the Go <laughs> in a five hundred, a new five hundred. <laughs> a new five hundred is pretty roomy, actually. You're not six. They four. they actually make them pretty big now. Only five inches shorter. Than I compared to how they were. I'm saying there's room to spare. <laughs> one Titanic. thing. <laughs> One thing I'd love to talk about this like pod is like I'm like sure you have your mom is off the boat right yeah so I'm like sure you have like a ton of like I like call them like uh, Italian immigrant stories mm-hmm. like if I can go back with like my normal like the crazy things that normal people do I mean don't don't do that like Italian people do like when we went Christmas tree sh- <laughs> I can't even say it when we went Christmas tree shopping. He like picked out a tree in like the middle of the woods, brought an axe, and we chopped it down and like brought it home. Right there and then. Right there. Wait. In the middle of the woods. The middle. Wait, with yeah. the bugs and everything that was our on Christmas it. Tree. Yeah. He doesn't. No, big. He's big, going to a supermarket. Yeah. To buy a Christmas tree. <laughs> buy a Christmas I mean, tree. this was years ago, and we were like kids. <laughs> Look, he had like a net and everything. He put it on top of a car. It was yeah. it was priceless. Why? Why we gotta buy one, right? Yeah. Let's not waste money. It's free. It's free. I love that. What's well, a different? So it's a different mentality. I mean, we didn't do that. We always bought it. Not like a, a really nice tree, but... No, I know. Just we used to always put the lights on it. Well, how do now you they feel sell about the ones with the lights. We used to like... It used to be all like messed up. How do you feel cute. about real trees versus fake trees? Uh, I think real trees make a big of a mess. I think Thank it's beautiful. Yep. It's yep. beautiful, but... You're picking the pine needles in June. And it's a we, fire hazard. We stopped doing it yeah. for years now. We, we, we oh, used to yeah. do it every year. You're rigging a dead tree. Yeah, I have a fake tree too. It's like white. Like it looks like it has like a snow white on it. Of course, it's, no. it's white. Yeah. You're in Howard Beach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Beach? That's actually a very good point. That's like a good fellow tree. I feel like every good fellow tree is white. Has either a white so? or silver tree. Very true. Silver? John Casano has a white tree. He does. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and Michael where does John Casano live? Howard Beach. Yeah. Know. Okay. Yeah. I rest my case. My I don't mom, know. Actually, my my wife wants a, a white tree. It's so nice. She loves that. That's straight from Goodfellas, bro. We so I settled. I said I didn't want a white tree. So last year we got a tree that's flocked, like it looks with, like there's with snow white, on yeah, it with, with, the, with, with the snow. Yeah, that's how mine is. But the whole reason why I don't like a real tree, the mess, yeah. that thing makes it almost a you have bigger to sweep, mess. Sweep like every day. Yeah, it's all white and it's all white powder. Yeah, and then you have to put water in it. It looks like, like there's dandruff on everything. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, terrible. Yeah. Exactly. So I think I think this year I'm gonna give in and get her a white tree. You should. It's beautiful. Is how, my tree beautiful? It's, beautiful. My tree's beautiful? it's tall too. It's like up to the ceiling. So how long have you been and how you doing, Beach? <sighs> so I've been married for nine years. So nine years. Wow. So you you've been married a long time. Yeah. Like you know, from like an early age. I mean. Yeah. I used to live. Well, my parents still live in Glendale, Queens. Okay. But I grew up in Green Avenue. You know where Green Avenue is? Mm-hmm. It's like, where the hell is I guess, that? borderline of Brooklyn, Bridgewood. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, right. there you okay. go. Okay, now I know. 
most of my childhood was there and then eight years old i moved to glendale nice yeah and you always had like a italian upbringing like an italian influence a hundred percent our um our apartments were literally the size of like in here so like we had like family calm nowadays it's like if you invite people you're like no um it's gonna be too much people in this house back then we didn't care we had like 50 people in the house all at the same time <laughs> you know no one cared back then i miss those parties i do too those like those like family parties me and my mother were just talking about it this morning like what christmas is going to be like and she's like uh we should have it at your house, so we have an excuse for let you know to do it smaller. And I said, no. Yeah, I'm gonna fill that basement with people, That's wall awesome. to wall. Mm -hmm. And I she's like, like the basement. I said, yeah, the basement. The basement's where the parties happen. Yep. You know, old That's, school. Mm -hmm. And that's how we grew up, all jamming into my grandmother's basement. Yep. You know, and and those are some of the the ha my grandmother had a my my dad's mother had wood paneling. And then mirrors on a wall in the basement. So even though we were, you know, 30 people packed into a tight basement of a ranch house, right, underground, we had mirrors. Mm -hmm. So it looked like there was, you know, 60 people in a much bigger room. <laughs> wow. Those are the good times, though. Yeah. Like, we used to have, like, Santa Claus come, and, like, we used to all, like... Who dressed up Christmas. as Santa Claus? My uncle always. Yeah. yeah. It's always some uncle. Yeah. And then they always used to uh, be like, this is the real Santa Claus. I'm like, this ain't real Santa Claus. This is teal. Yeah, real Santa. Like I never <laughs> fell for that. <laughs> like when, when I was a kid, my parents gave me like the Home Alone answer. Like all those Santas work for like the real Santa. Yeah. My, my uncle Tom was Santa and my uncle Tom was way too recognizable as Uncle Tom. Yeah. <laughs> was he skinny? He was he was a skinny guy, but you know he put on the whole. Oh, the I mean, whole outfit. When I tell you, okay. And he had a beard, like so he was he was putting the Santa beard into a real beard. Oh, so, so it was like extra wide. But <laughs> I mean, you could the the second you heard him talk, my my uncle Tom for whatever reason didn't sound like a guy from Queens. Yeah. He sounded like a guy from like down south. Right, how y'all doing? Bike a guy, <laughs> oh, right? Santa Claus, <laughs> and he smoked. So Santa Claus smelled like cigarettes and sounded like Uncle Tom. <laughs> smelled like Santa, Santa. you smell like beef and cheese. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. But that was like that was also like we had my my grandparents lived across the street from each other. Yeah. So we had two Christmases, right? We had there was the the slightly more American Christmas, mm. and then there was the super Italian Christmas. Mm -hmm. So Santa wasn't coming from my nonna's house. <laughs> Santa had to come across the street from my grandma's yeah. house. You know? Uh, you know, she still did like the Christmas tree. She still loved Christmas. But Christmas Eve was about having everyone at an extra long table and all that. Yeah, those yeah. were the best days to eat. Were, were both your parents immigrants? Yeah. So... Obviously, Christmas Eve is more important. Yeah, 100%. All yeah. the fishes. From like an outsider, why is Christmas <clears throat> Eve the bigger party than Christmas Day for uh, the Italian culture? I guess you could say it's the celebration leading up to Christmas. So like Christmas Day is supposed to be a day of like a day of like the rejoice. The night before is like the night where you prepare and you work hard. and Yeah, you right. prepare. You prepare. It's like you're preparing a feast for Christ's arrival. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then at midnight, the and then at midnight you yeah. go to mass. Mass. Yeah. I feel like the and food then, is better the eve than the day. Oh, 100 percent. Stuff the here and there. 100 percent. That's <laughs> so <laughs> true. Like you have like so well, because the eve, the eve. In other words, the eve is a holiday. Like you go right. to Italy, Christmas Eve is a bigger deal than Christmas Day. Yeah. Christmas Day is for your your. Your immediate family. Christmas Eve is for your extended family. Mm -hmm. True. So Christmas Day Very is true. really not that That's many true, people. That's true. 100. In in the traditional sense, yeah, it's supposed to be you know you do nothing on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. You went to mass at midnight. And you eat the leftovers. No, you get up. You make you make panettone, right? Oh. Oh. I can French go for that right now. Yeah. Yeah. And then you sit, you watch, you know, you watch TV, you do whatever you do. You know, it's a it's a uh, Christmas Day is more. You know, uh, uh, an American holiday. Yeah. You know, uh, so, so yeah, Christmas Eve's the big deal. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Did your parents like remind you that like Christmas Day was American Christmas? Was that was that like a thing growing up? 
Like be we didn't honest. we didn't have this. <laughs> Yeah, because my, my dad, till this day, he does not speak a word of English. Really? He'll, yeah, he'll do like little words. He'll he'll say like little words. My mom speaks English and then obviously Italian. But um, how does he get by? He was an artist. Yeah, but what, what did your father do? Uh, he was a contractor. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, then he totally get by. He worked that. on his own. Yeah. Yeah. But he was everywhere. Like he, from the stories that if you meet my dad, he'll talk to you for hours and hours and hours and hours. An- Anthony, said, wait, Anthony and I are both second generation. Yep. So like your okay. your first hand experience is our yeah. second hand experience from our parents. Yep. Yeah. You know, and, and growing up with our with our grandparents. Right. You know, it's it's very interesting to see that even decades later, the 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 culture in Italy hadn't changed much. Um, what do you mean Italian that? cereal? What I, I knew Greg's interest so part. My dad, right? He he makes espresso and then he boils the milk like warms it up a lot he'll put it together he puts sugar in there like in Mm -hmm. a bowl he gets semolina bread or what back then they didn't have semolina bread so they just had whatever bread they had he breaks it he puts it in there and he eats it with a spoon yeah and it was a little stale always i feel like it's on the staler side right it's 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 all bread yeah yeah so they would use every ounce of bread every ounce yeah so you know because they couldn't afford to throw it away they eat everything with bread. My mom eats like watermelon with bread. bread yeah. With bread. Like she'll just cut it and she's like eating. I mean, if I could afford to, I would. I would eat everything with bread every day. Yeah. I love bread. Danielle, Danielle uh, uh, brought a loaf of lard bread over to Anthony's parents' house and I, I joined them and his mother sent me home with this, this bread. And I uh, they didn't even make it to my. I have to drive with bread. Oh my god, I do that sometimes. <laughs> That's my weakness. I yeah. go to the bakery. I made a video about this actually. Yeah. It was in the car. It was nice and hot. So the smell. I'm looking at it. I'm like, no. I'm literally talking to myself in the car. Do not do it. You need to eat dinner at home. Do it. I'm going like this. Do I it. break the butt. We call the butt. Yeah. Like the end. Yeah. The heel. That's the, the best yeah. part. <laughs> yeah. I bit into it. I'm like. That's good. I will fight Again. for the heel. I'll fight for the heel. <laughs> what I, you know, typically I'm not a heel. I'm not the you know the no, heel person. When, when but it's hot, yeah, it's different. Oh. Yes, because it's soft. Mm-hmm. As it cools, the bread, the 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 heel gets a little tough, a little chewier. Yep. And it's perfect hot like that. Mm-hmm. I did something in a video recently that is something that I that I've done, you know, since I'm a teenager. My mother's sending me into town for bread was I would bite the heel off and then turn the loaf around. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> so that, you know, I the, used to do that as a kid, too. That's funny. By the time we had yeah. to cut it, it, it was inconsequential <laughs> if the heel was missing, you know? Like, what little mouse ate this? <laughs> no, my mother would, would t- you know, take it halfway out the out the thing and cut, 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 and then put the other half back in anyway for yeah. later. And then later on, she'd pull it out and be like, what happened to this? Oh, it doesn't matter. Maybe I cut it. I don't know. And she keeps going. You know how many times I got away with it? That's funny. So you know, there's something, obviously, like, no one knows that I do. Mm. I have a little olive oil bottle in my car. So if I have, if I have, I'm not hey, what? joking. Yeah. It I doesn't go it bad? in my, um, what is that called? Glove compartment. Box. Yeah. Um, when I get, like, bread, I put it, like, a. Like, like an actual, actual, actual just, like your own personal bottle, like an actual yeah, my, like just bottle. So like a little a perfume personal, bottle, a like personal a little one, bottle, yeah, mini, a fifth one. of olive oil. So like the little Partana cans, like there's the no Georgian, not there. Partana, it's, like it's a, a different brand, yeah. but it's yeah. No, no, but like I've seen like I've is seen it a like bottle or a can? It's a bottle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is and it's a cork or a twist. Twist. No, 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 twist. It has to be. Yeah. Be in the car. Yeah. Wow. I'd be scared to stay in the car, like there's oil stains. You're gonna see it. Yeah. It's nice and warm. With the oh, my God. Imagine you get in your car, and it's it's like a really cold day, and you get in your car in the morning. It's frozen. Yeah, smell, what, what you happens to olive winter? oil, and it just exploded. <gasps> it's just dripping down. I would die. No. Do you keep it in the winter? No, it, it's, it's usually gone. Right. It's there. It's, <laughs> it's, usually it's usually gone, gone by then. <laughs> you know how I keep a box of tissues in my town car? Yeah. She keeps a bottle of oil. Of all, there you go. I think that might be the most Italian thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. That's outstanding. Yeah. The first step is admitting you have a problem. It's well, not. What's the problem how, with that? How? Greg thinks being too into a culture is like a problem. Yeah. Okay, wait. And this what is a guy who has eight skulls tattooed on. I'm kidding. It's I'm kidding. the same thing as having gum or candy in your car. 
Why can't you have olive oil in your car? Uh, it's not. <laughs> we all have to get together. Yeah, yeah. Greg, it's the Anthony, same. Anthony, you sound like that more than I do. Greg, it's the same way you always have vibes <laughs> in your car. The I'm world. My, car. my favorite thing. Have you ever seen Greg's like? Um, <laughs> oh God, what? There's like a thousand. There's a thousand things running through my mind right no, now. No, like what? on his um on his rearview mirror, he has like um what is it called? Why am I forgetting the, the tree? Name of it? No, no, but it's like a tree. Like, do you know how they have like a different air like a logo? Yes. Air freshener. So it's like an air freshener, but it says Helen Keller can't see me or something um, like that. So, or so I have, like, I have an mirror? air freshener that says Helen Keller taught me how to drive. Who's it's Helen a, Keller? I'm in, sorry. It's in Braille. No, no. You, Helen you know. Keller was a deaf <laughs> mute girl <laughs> from the late 19th century. Really? Maybe if was, I see her, I don't who know. Who was you. taught how to speak no, by the I miracle work. Blind, yes, yes, deaf, yes. mute, and extremely okay. talented. Yeah. Wow, that's messed up. <laughs> that's messed up, Greg. <laughs> and she, she, her story is famous because, and I and forgive me for forgetting the, the therapist's name, but uh, uh, she worked with her and taught her how to speak, and she wrote books. Really? Yes. Water. Anyway, so do you have balsamic too, or just olive oil? No, just olive oil. Greg's like, okay, I'm gonna make a salad that. in there. But what about like <laughs> salt and pepper? No, no, no. You know they have mini salt and pepper grinders. That's, That's what Danielle. I, I need to buy it actually. She has salt and pepper and a little, like a little fork and knife. Do you know those things that you Do pull you out? Do you know if they added them. olive oil to that? That's the perfect. Yeah, it is. We could s- cut this out because we're gonna because we're gonna like invent it. Cut it out. Yeah. Cut it out because we're gonna like invent it. Then I just want everyone to know that <laughs> my <laughs> on the record as a recovering <laughs> fat ass, my mind <laughs> came up with that. Well, maybe even a little section for crushed red pepper. Oh, I'm getting excited now. <laughs> <laughs> a little section. Getting carried away. Oh, like an Italian, like a Lunchables. What, what, situations, oh. what situations do you find yourself going to the glove box for olive oil? Other than, of course, having the, you she know, ripping the heel she sniffs it. off no, the hot bread. No, it has to be bread. when I have bread. Right. If I buy bread, it's, it's there. She said that you very light. You can't have bread. It's only for bread. No. So it's an emergency olive oil. <laughs> yeah. No, like if I'm only. driving a long drive and I'm like, okay, let me get a piece of bread. And then I'm stopped and I'm just like, Ooh. I'm picturing like she opens a glove box. <laughs> I, I I'm to, picturing, right? I'm picturing, I wonder if we can animate this. I'm picturing she has, she opens a glove box and there's a little glass box with a hammer and it says break for bread use only. <laughs> <laughs> Do not touch. <laughs> you break the little window and it's pull like a little an olive oil, oil like bottle out. To to like like, like when you have a hard day, do you just go in there and huff it and you just... Yeah. Huff yeah, Greg. it. I, I smell like it. smelling markers, but she smells olive oil. Is that what you do with that air freshener? <laughs> I can picture yeah. Greg. No wonder markers. you drive like Helen Keller. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever had... um My my dad would call it like Italian toast. What? Yeah, so how is it made? D- don't don't ask me why. It's so it's like so basic, but we went crazy for it. He would, and this is why I was a fat kid. He literally cut half a loaf of freaking semolina bread, seeded and smothered it in like freaking butter, put it right in the mic, uh, put it right in the toaster oven, and that was our Italian toast. Hmm. I mean, he would make that with like eggs. It was freaking so awesome. Oh, that sounds good. I ate a half a loaf of bread like it was no problem. Oh. Uh, we have something that's called um, pane con zato, and we use that. So it's like, you know, it's like garlic bread. Yeah. And then they put like um, sardines on it and all. Um, all right, you will lost me at the sardines. Yeah, I don't like sardines either. And I'm Sicilian. Uh, yeah, anchovies. Like right. yeah. I do, I do. Yeah. I don't I like anchovies it. either, so I get it without it. I like tolerate it. I, I tolerate it. Like if it's not overbearingly strong, it has to be like a hint. Like I... Uh, I love Caesar salad. It has anchovy paste. Yeah, so if it don't has taste to have, it. Yeah, right. I'm if I don't one. taste it, it's I, fine. I have PTSD from anchovies. I, I, I can't. Why? So, I, <laughs> Anthony knows this story. So, every Christmas we would go Christmas Eve. We go to my grandma's, and same thing. Like in the basement, it's like that very uh, linoleum floor, wood panels. All the kids are playing down there, mm-hmm. and we get pizza. And I like mushrooms on my pizza when I was a kid, and my dad liked anchovies. So I go upstairs, my dad's like, oh, we got pizza up here. And I'm like, oh, which one's the mushrooms? He's like, oh, yeah, it's that one. I'm like four or five. And it was littered, littered with anchovies. And I actually, it, it made me sick that ever, ever since then, I, 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 I can't uh, have anchovies. I can't. But the pasta con star, like, I like that. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's hidden. Like, There's really other flavors. In, yeah. I like right. it. It just makes it salty. Yeah. Yeah. And then what's the, the the pizza with the same thing? Oh, right, right. Um, Sfinchon. Sfinchon. 
Well, they're two little fish that are very salty and. This is a Sicilian they argument. They do they do they not add the same flavor to to stuff? And this is coming from a Napoli diner who doesn't like fish. So be gentle in your explanation. Wait, Sal, you're Napoletana? I thought you were um, Sicilian. No, Are you Sicilian? no, 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 no. Fully Napoletana? I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> I'm not a fighter. He married a Sicilian. Yeah. Oh. I was, I was okay. drunk. <laughs> I was drunk. <laughs> oh, no, I meant it was anchovies. We love John. Not sardines. Anchovies in the pizza. Yeah. That's what I meant. Sardines is like an actual, like, bigger fish. Yeah. Okay. Like, anchovies, I mean, I guess it's a, I only know anchovies mm. like filleted, salted. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Melt more. Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like when they make uh, sarde con becafico. No, that's sarde. That's sarde. Sarde becafico. That's what I'm saying. It's a bigger fish. That was so Sicilian, bro. <laughs> you said that it's so Sicilian. Sarde, like, damn. <laughs> yeah. So sarde con becafico, my grandma would make. It's like uh, like that the big fish, the it sardine. Like a music group. And then it's like filled with breadcrumbs and raisins, right, or something yeah. like that, and olive oil, and then you roll it. That sounds really good, it. actually. No, no. Do you guys put raisins in your meatballs, you Sicilians? No. No. Everyone I've, says that. Italians we put we put raisins in our stuffing. Dude, that's stuffing. in like my Thanksgiving really stuffing. His yeah, mom's, that's good. His mom's Italian stuffing is insane. It's I my like nonna's, really. Yeah. The sausage and everything. You have no. All, that's my death row meal. Thanksgiving stuffing, but it's the way that my nonna makes it. Sausage, yeah. Yeah. It's not, I gotta try your stuffing. It's not I'm telling like, you. For, for I people, have it all year long. For people who watch in other parts of the world, <laughs> this this. I don't think stuffing is a traditional like Italian. No. Yeah, no. But Italian stuffing is a very unique Italian American creation. Oh, 100 mm. percent. Because like your stovetop type stuffing is you know the the chunks of bread and it's kind of like a pile. Whereas mm. this is like a baked, almost like a loaf. It's yeah. amazing. The sausage, sausage, everything. Pecorino. Yeah. Oh, you add sausage in your stuff? Rice. Everything. Yeah. No, it, it's so good. Like when uh, we did a Friendsgiving when Greg and I freaking lived together and like we all agreed to make something. So I said stuffing and like people thought I didn't even know that like there was another kind of stuffing. So like everyone got like really <laughs> annoyed at me because they thought, I mean, Greg kind of knew, but everyone thought that I was just going to like get like the stove top. Yeah. And freaking meantime, I had this tray of like wow. authentically homemade like Italian stuffing, which was delicious. That's awesome. But fun fact, I got into a fight over it. They're like, how are you, how are you just gonna do like a stove top? Like you picked like the easy thing, yeah, they, blah they blah blah. He cheaped out. But yeah, like, it, it was it was phenomenal. Like no, it was handmade. Okay. Every Greg filmed me the making stuff it. with the mushrooms and the yeah. sauce. Right. Yeah, freaking yeah, forget it. Sounds good. Raisin. Forget oh it. It's so God. it's death row meal when you every hear, time. You think rice, sausage, raisins, pecorino, and all this. Like oh, that wouldn't work. Bread crumbs. Yeah. Works. Don't forget bread crumbs. It works. My aunt's having mm. like 150 people for my cousin's graduation party on Saturday. I'm literally gonna call her on the way home and say, could you? Make me that stuffing next week. <laughs> I'm gonna ask my mom to make it now. Can you yeah. give me some? No, it's a ba- I, it might not make it home. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna yeah, stop over. I'm like not gonna lie to you. It holds over really well too. Like you can eat it for like up to like a week after. It's one of those oh, yeah, things that it's like a meal prep. Flavor. You can make. You can put yeah. it on bread, and make yeah. it into a sandwich. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's one of those yeah. things. Yeah. That the flavor gets better each day. Yeah. Yeah. The sausage soaks uh, into the oil and everything. Kind of makes. Oh, if I was skinny, I would meal prep that every week. Is right, your, so is your husband a, a Sicilian? Yeah. Yeah? But my mother-in-law was born in Napoli. Okay. And then she moved to Sicily. So, so she's Napoletan? She's Napoletan. Yeah. yeah. That's really funny because my nonna did the opposite. So my nonna was born in Sicily and she moved up like north. No way. Yeah. So oh, wow. her and her family. Um, so she, she really kind of considers herself like a northerner. Hmm. More than like a Sicilian. Does she speak? Does she have that the the dialect, Sicilian dialect? No, or no? no, really. Yeah, because she was raised up north. Wow. So, how about your grandpa? He's straight, straight Sicilian. Really, as Sicilian as it gets in every oh, which way possible. He's love the epitome that. of a small Sicilian man. Yeah, in every which oh. way possible. Okay, we need to have a conversation. Do you f- with, yeah, your, you know, with your grandpa? Y- you'll enjoy. <laughs> you'll enjoy. Find yourself like Sicilianizing <laughs> a lot mean? of like American dishes. <laughs> Like you'll make on Thanksgiving something traditionally American and then you add, you just start, you know, plussing it up to something much better or much more uh, Italian. I feel um, like Italians do that. <laughs> everything, right? I think so. I, I might have. Ego I Italian remember, stuffing, you know, yeah. like that. Yeah. Like you need to put a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Like what, in other words, like what, 
if you're, do you, do you, can you point to a recipe that's cha- that you've, you doctored up to, you success. doctored up, right, that you made hmm. more yours? And specifically because of your background. Like, oh, it's missing that's a good this, question. It's missing so, that. Yeah. Let me add that's this. a really good question. That. Because you're first generation. Yeah. And I feel like that's a thing that a lot of first generation, like my mother, my aunts, they've all done. 100%. Yeah. That's where the Italian stuffing comes yeah. from. Nobody's passed down. Honestly, I might have, but I, I don't really notice because I don't measure. I just do whatever. So I might have, like, thrown things in there, you know? Well, what would be some yeah. Sicilian ingredients? <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, like uh, what dish? Like, give me an example. Like adding pecorino to macaroni and cheese. Or, so, or like, oh, you know, okay. uh, or... Uh, 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 Italian cheese, cheese to like an American sandwich, maybe. I forgot what my grandmother used to do to her fried chicken. My grandmother made like really good, like Southern style. My, my nonna made really good, like that Southern style fried chicken. But sounds delicious. Mm. She would season yeah. the the whatever the the. She'd make it with like seasoned breadcrumbs, almost like a cutlet. Yeah. But oh, you know, that sounds good. Like, and that was her spin. Yeah. Oh yeah, pe- oh, yeah. Pe- pe- pecorino for a chicken collars. Is- she'd make fried chicken for for. For us to go to the beach with. Okay, oh. so look, I got a, I got an example. <laughs> yeah. My mom did something um, with chicken parm. Like, you know, when you fry the cutlet first mm-hmm. and then you put the sauce and then the mozzarella. My mom would do the opposite. Like, she'll put, like, the sauce, the, the chicken cutlet, but not fried. It's, like, grilled or something. And then the cheese and then the sauce on the top. And then pecorino on top so it's like everything's like opposite but it still was like so delicious yeah mm-hmm. you know because it's not supposed to look like a, a piece of melted plastic over your chicken yeah. it's supposed to look like <laughs> yeah parmigiano <laughs> yeah piece of melted plastic yeah i think that i think a lot of uh a lot of italians rejected uh in a lot of way the italian american stuff i mean the the, yeah. the immigrants did yeah. And then they would look, but I mean, you can't argue that chicken palm is good. Right. You're going to make it. Right. You can't argue you're going to say, listen, I could do this a lot better. Yeah. You know, if we, if we, if we do it a more traditional way or something like that. Right. That's yeah, a good example. Right. Or like the chicken franchise, my mom does it breaded, breadcrumbs. Mm. Ooh. And then she adds like the chicken stock, the, mm. the lemon, the, the wine, but she does it breaded. She you're supposed like an egg batter. Like with, with, yeah. um, breadcrumbs. You don't yeah. do it like with flour. She did it yeah, differently. Just be, just be uh, straight eggs. Yeah, so good. Yeah, came out delicious. I don't know about you guys, but like when I go out and order parm, like I tell them not to put cheese. Like I like I'll tell them I just want like a little bit of parmesan on top. Really? Like how how you make eggplant? Yeah, like that's how I like it. Sprinkle. I cheese. could see that because when you reheat it, <laughs> it gets like grain. tougher. No, I but I don't even right? like like that much cheese. Like it's not that like it's appealing to like me. Loopy yeah, yeah. Like flavors. it's not appealing. To I me. like a lot of cheese, but like I know what you mean. Like you can't have a lot of cheese because then you're masking the whole thing. You're yeah, like I want to taste it. I want to taste the cheese. chicken. Taste the eggplant. Yeah. Like this is America. We make cows in factories, and we can put as much cheese as we. That's want. exactly. <laughs> what it is. I mean, it's all for like effect at the end of the day. Oh yeah. But I don't really like it that way. Yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes Side note: too much. You have very good. Uh, what is it called? What did I try at the feast? Not at the feast. I like uh, panelli. Yes. Oh my god, they were so yeah. good. Pane panelli. So you good. Gotta try. That's like Next my time favorite my mom thing. Makes it, I'll, my god. I'll bring you. I love panelli with. Anthony ricotta. told me what it was, so and I'm like, good. you're putting fried chickpea no, dough inside so of. Yeah, bread. it's like little like, fried chickpea I know, cakes. But I didn't know what it was, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Trust me, it's so good. Yeah. I had two of them, and I'm like, all right. Is That's another really good beach snack. Yeah, on it yeah right oh, now. Italian beach snack. Now, do you do lemon or ricotta or both? I so like both. you're not supposed to do. You, you're supposed to pick one or the other. I, like I always do. Both. Oh, you like it at the same time? I'm going. With, I'm yeah. going with, oh, with the ricotta. Okay. Yeah, not a, see, see, see how. Yeah, no, she, see how disappointed she just got. <laughs> Separate, you do it like both? One sandwich for ricotta. Yeah, but no, but you get one. like the creaminess and the saltiness from the ricotta, and then you get the like the acid from the lemon, and then the fry. I got a good question for you. I like mm-hmm. the lemon from the lemon. <laughs> the lemon, not the ricotta. The 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 I want the I lemon the in my drink, Greg. I don't, I don't like about The lemon from the lemon? I like that the ricotta tastes like ricotta, and the lemon tastes is like lemon. very lemony. <laughs> Our chick-up, uh, chick-up, 
chick. Christ. <laughs> Our- Am I rubbing <laughs> off on everyone where we're having many strokes? The chickpea. Yeah. I love no, the my, my with mind the is everywhere lately. I like it, the chickpea. Um, <laughs> chicken know. cutlets. Is ketchup okay? Ketchup on chicken cutlets. Okay. For my mom that and dad, no. no. But I eat it sometimes with that. I feel like that that's an exception. If you have a good sauce. This became a big deal. I used to do it when I was a kid. This so did I. Up. When I was a kid, I did it all the time. Listen, well, it was I'll do it now. As chicken nuggets and chicken and tenders. French fries with especially yeah. when the chicken call is extra crispy. Thank you. Yes. Barbecue sauce, like burnt honey mustard. Well, yes. listen, chicken cutlets. Oh, yeah. Rose approval, even with the ketchup. Dude, a good chicken yeah. call was yeah. Good Greg, honey Greg, mustard. turn that microphone towards her. I have to say this on the pod, but so Italians, you know how they are about like. They don't even like they're chicken like, cutlets. No, they God forbid you do something wrong, right? So as a kid, I used to put chicken cutlet with ketchup. You know, my nana didn't care. She whatever, as long as I was eating, eating my nana yeah. was happy. Four. She didn't care 100%. what I did. So, but I went to Italy. I just came back from Sicily. My little cousins, kids, they're eating chicken cutlets with ketchup. I stood there for a second in this small town in Sicily, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. In Sicily? In Sicily. They do it now. Listen, they're they're they getting Americanized. Anecdotal they mix, evidence. They mix and like mayo Heinz tomato and ketchup. ketchup? Like literally a ketchup bottle. I was shocked. Mm. Like I literally stood there and I was like, no way. Okay, Did no way. But it? they have little no, packets of mayo and way. ketchup mixed together. Mayo when chup. I went there. They, mayo chup is good. <laughs> no, I love mayo ketchup. Yeah. But you know what? They don't taste the same in the packet. Like you have to actually like, yeah. like do it together. Make your own fancy sauce. Yeah. Understood. It tastes better like that. <laughs> like a good chicken cutlet with like honey mustard, barbecue sauce. So, so. Hot sauce. So I, I was asked about this on, we, we talk, well, not that I was asked, we were talking about chicken cutlets on growing up this Italian. Mm-hmm. And this became a very big deal, mm-hmm. a very big to do about chicken cutlets with ketchup because my father would eat them right out the fridge. Cold? Just, oh, I yeah. love, ch- ketchup, I eat cold chicken cold. cutlets. That's not even a question. But like, I do that too. I just don't put anything on them. Mm. I've done that. Let if me ask I, you a I, question. If I have lemon, I'll take it out and I'll just like that. Honestly, but honestly, like my I'll wife made cutlets uh, a few days ago. Yeah. I I have not heated one up. They've I've eaten them exclusively cold. out of the yeah. refrigerator. And said uh, my mom made my mom makes cutlets, and for an Irish lady, her cutlets are pretty good. Very. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For me, right, my opinion. Mm-hmm. If I make chicken cutlets, like you know when you do with the egg, yeah. and then the breadcrumb, and then you fry it, that. I do not like leftover the next day because it has like a weird eggy taste. I l- I'll eat the next day like warmed up in the toaster oven. I like it made from the barbecue. Like if you like dip it in oil and then breadcrumbs and then you put it on the barbecue. Ro confirmed anecdotally, not just that kids in Sicily are eating ketchup on fried chicken cutlets, mm-hmm. but that grilling cutlets is like a real Sicilian thing. Yeah. I love a grilled cutlet. I haven't had them in a while because the preference in my house is to fry. Yeah. But you said something important mm-hmm. about fried cutlets. Because fried cutlets, you egg them, then you do the breadcrumbs so, yeah. so they stick to the cutlet, right? You won't eat them the next day cold. No. Or even reheat them. Even reheat them. Even reheat them. Yeah. Wow. See, I, I eat Chinese food cold. Can I'll I eat, eat your leftover really? cutlets? Yeah, I'll, I'll eat an anything animal. cold. I'll take your leftover <laughs> an cutlets. No, so I, it gives. I don't like that egg taste the next day. Taste, like yeah. you taste the animal in it. I don't know if that makes sense. I, I like know what you like mean. You no, because you take. I I like get it. Like when something is egg washed and like it comes that out of the taste. oven and you eat it too soon and it still tastes like very. It's like eggy. rubbery. Yeah. Yeah. Not rubbery, but like you taste. I don't know. One thing I can't eat cold is like chicken franchise because of that. So yeah, I get what I mean, you yeah. mean. Yeah, like that. that. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. You're almost like you're eating like. But a, the grilled like one. But you're saying even reheated, you can't do the egg. No. If it's a fried cutlet with with egg dipped in the egg, I have to have it fresh. I've never hot, tasted like right Wait, how do you make a grilled, grilled cutlet. cutlet? How do you yeah. make a grilled cutlet? How do you make grilled cutlets? Uh, with bread crumb or without? With? with? Well, let's say with. So we always use our barbecue. Um, I would do vegetable oil. Okay. Put it in vegetable oil. In the not olive bread oil? crumbs. No, vegetable no, oil. Not, not, well, no, not olive oil's in our car. <laughs> yeah, yeah true. it's waiting for me. I can't waste that, right? No, but so vegetable oil, mm-hmm. breadcrumbs, and then we put it in the in the barbecue. It's See, so good. So it's like a chicken cutlet with grill marks. Yes. I like and we tell do that you with what, steak too. I like tell you what, 
one oh, thing. Oh, wow. Steak? With breadcrumbs. Wait, oh, steak? Oh, my God. With breadcrumbs. All right. I got to make you guys taste this. Now you have, my, now you have my attention. Like thin or yeah. you're talking about? It's, well, it has to be like that. What cut of steak? Um, What does my mom buy? Uh, I think it's called chicken steak or something. My mom introduced me to it. It's like more, more of oh, like a... steak you use for white chicken fried steak. Basically, I guess, uh, yeah. What is it? It's like a chicken What's chicken steak? fried steak? Like chuck? Like chicken fried steak. You know, it's southern thing, chicken fried steak, where they um, they cover it in like sausage gravy. No. Like biscuits and gravy. They call it chicken fried steak because it's, it's in the same steak batter fried, like as the fried, fried chicken. chicken. Oh, we could use like ribeye. Flour, eggs, breadcrumbs. Because you're talking about like breading a, a thin ribeye like uh like a cutlet and yeah. then grilling it and grilling it that sounds oh. amazing oh my god with a nice yeah. salad on the side so wow good. like imagine yeah. the steak they use for like a um a brajol, but like a little bit thicker and you don't roll it you basically just bread it like a yeah okay. you know you know like the what's that cut of beef um that what are they calling like a strip steak no no oh no it's like called something they like, like hammer it that's with the holes what, are, what is yeah. that called you don't t- chuck not chuck right um, I mean, you can yeah, use Yeah, chuck any, steaks. Yeah, you chuck, can use, yeah, maybe that's too. kind of tender steak. As right. As you fry yeah. it like a chicken. Yeah, not fry it, though. Grill it. Grill it. Mm-hmm. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you one way. Oh, so good. I can't stand chicken cutlets. J- just to go back to that. Do you know when you fry them in too much oil and they, like, absorb the oil and they get that oil taste? Yeah. Right I can't stand that. You have to have the right temperature. Do you, you put... Right not eat the cutlets. Do you put the paper towel... Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. 100%. When you, yeah, okay, yeah, when yeah. Done. Okay. No, no, my, but like... My wife must use must use a roll of paper towels. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm the same way. Yeah. And then like, have you ever seen that skit? Like when you when you bread them, then you have to wash your hands. Bread them, wash your hands. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Because then yeah. they get like covered. In my, my wife has broken tradition in more ways than one. Obviously, Uh-oh. our use of pecorino is, might seem a little excessive to some people. We said it was, we broke it. She does one to one pecorino and breadcrumbs. So, you want to talk about those cutlets having the right amount of like saltiness and crispiness? Oof. Because mm. all that cheese mixed in with the breadcrumbs. Yeah. And you don't even need salt or nothing because no. the cheese is salted. She uses a little bit of garlic salt. Yeah. No, just but a little it's good. bit. And what she does, the other way she breaks tradition, she takes aluminum pans, right? Now, forgive her for wasting aluminum pans like this. You know, my, my grandmother used to use two dishes. Just egg, breadcrumb, and then onto the, onto the plate with the, you know, to get them ready to fry. All with one fork. My wife will take a whole <laughs> tray, True. fill it with breadcrumbs, mm. and season them the way she likes, mix it all together. And then a whole tray and fill it with beaten eggs. That's smart. One, it's actually smart. Yeah, because then you're that's gonna have to do. refill the that's that's a lot the breadcrumbs, yeah. and then you get so, salmonella uh, on the breadcrumbs. At least it's like enough. And she eyes it so well. There's not that's a lot a restaurant of restaurants still. You put yeah. it in waste eggs. not, want not. Yeah. And at the end, when there's a little leftover breadcrumb yes. and a little leftover egg, <gasps> she mixes them together. The patties, right? Oh, like yeah. the yeah, yes. those, those, those little patties. But wait, does she the cut fresh garlic in it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's, like oh, yeah. it's like Italian hush puppies. Yes. Yes. They're really, really That's, that's the best and part. Italian hush puppies. That's exactly what they are. But that's something her grandmother used to do. No, we do that too. Yep. Same. That's what the would, best. I want to call it. What would you say? <laughs> uh, do, you, do you entertain a lot? What do you mean? Like uh, cooking wise? Yeah. yeah. Parties, yeah. people, family. Um, recently I started doing it because, you know, my, my parents are getting older. My mother in law is older, so everyone's basically by me. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes we're by my mom's, but they're basically by me. So, but that's not to say they're still bringing stuff. No, my mom's yeah, always yeah. bringing me stuff. Yeah, She's like, I'm go. gonna make pasta, I'm gonna make this, and I'm gonna make that. <laughs> She's bringing trays over. You have to see my dad. I took a video of him, it's on my, my channel. I'll show you after. He has huge shop and st- shop and stop, stop and shop bags. There's like trays in there. He's like coming up the stairs like this. Like he's like moving into my house. Yeah. That's all food for like four people. Yeah. That's a, my, my, my father looks yeah. like the, the hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah. When he walks into my house. <laughs> like Ganga Din. He's got bags. I go, what are you moving in? He I love comes, that. My, my, that's how my parents get rid of those boxes they get from Costco. You know, you grab the box to put your stuff in. Or you, yeah, to get yeah, it home. yeah, yeah. That's how they get rid of them. They fill them with trays of food and bring them to my house. And then they keep, they keep it there by you, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, but as far as entertaining goes, what is 
like what are you what are your go tos, you know, for a big group of people? Pasta you, forno. Mm, oh. A thousand percent. Um, rice bowls. Mm -hmm. My mom makes banging rice bowls. You gotta try that too. I will bring it for you guys to try. Um, chicken cutlets, obviously. Salad. Um, what else? What else? What else? This, so this is your whole spread. Yeah, this is my whole spread. Okay. And then we get like the little like um, antipasta in there, like you know, like cheeses and salamis, and like. And then again, it's just us, like five people eating, and there's like a whole buffet on the table. So. See what what I love about your spread is it's a crowd pleaser. Yeah. If you're not yeah. in the mood for cutlets, you can have pasta. You got the heavy yeah. hitters. Hundred percent. Mm -hmm. And your pasta al forno, you do with the peas and the meat and everything too. Oh. Yeah. So good. Favorite. Sometimes. And the anliotti, the little. Pasta al forno yes. is what? Oh the meat sauce my God. And Some people, peas? my family. Okay. How do you make your pasta al forno? Uh, my family sometimes makes it with eggs in it, boiled eggs. Oh, oh okay. that gives a lot of flavor. I don't like it. Yeah, chopped up boiled eggs. Yeah, they do eggs. that. Yeah. I, I've like heard of that before. I don't like it. So the other would be um, the meat sauce, the peas. Then we put regolta in it, like seasoned regolta. Yeah. And my mom adds eggplants in there too. Ooh. Chopped oh, eggplants. Wow. So freaking good. Oh, the eggplant wouldn't get me off. Sicilians are like masters. This whole, this whole podcast was about food. I know. I'm like <laughs> drooling right now. Like the only thing I love more than my wife's cutlets is her eggplant. How does um, she make it? She fried, fried eggplant. Cuts eggplant. it super thin and fries it. That's a good beach uh, thing yeah. too. Oh, I'm a sucker. Fried for eggplant. Eggplant. With, oh my God. Like, like little medallions or like, like, like long? Um, she hasn't thing? made it in so long. Like I strips or medallions? She, she cuts yes. them. She cuts them across. Do you do you do a long ways or you do across? Medallions, half moon. No, I cut them across like that. Yeah, yeah, circles. Yeah. Oh, yeah, medallions. I, like I love both so ways. I don't care. I feel like it's easier. <laughs> I just like that's like a know? really solid pasta al forno. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, that's if you just good. dip the whole thing in and fried it, Anthony knows this. I'll take eggplant parm over chicken parm. Yes. Yeah. Same. No, same. But at I will least too. you know it's cooked. Sometimes chicken comes out rubbery. No, that's where well, that's when chicken's flavor. bad. It's have bad. you ever heard that's yeah. where chicken it's not palm, right? oh, it's chicken like palm comes from? Yeah, I get scared eggplant. to order that in yeah. restaurants. That's the traditional because it was chicken milanese and then it was um because they mixed the two together. So it was an eggplant dish and a fried chicken cutlet dish, and they put it together in eggplant parm. I mean chicken parm. <laughs> now, as as far as as you know, well, the reason why I asked, like if you're entertaining, it was like a reflex for you. You know, saying, like, this is everything that my family loves. This is what I make if I know mm -hmm. they're coming over. Yeah. You know, because this is what they're going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. How important is it, you know, because you're, you're, you're getting uh, your perspective on food out to the world. Because mm -hmm. it's a love language. Right, 100%. So, so how important is that table to you? You know, you, you mentioned earlier that you guys, you lived in a small apartment. Mm -hmm. but it was always filled with people, filled yeah. to the max. Because it didn't matter the space that you were sharing. All that mattered was that you were sharing. Right. So how often would you say that you're, you're, you're putting these, these meals together for family and just having everyone over? Like every Sunday, basically. We kept wow. that tradition, you know? It's always, as, a, as a child, I always, you know would always look at my aunt because from my mom's side, it's three sisters, her included, and a brother. They all were phenomenal cooks. So I would watch them like every year just make the same things like pasta forno, chicken cutlets, uh, you know, all these like different types of dishes. And um, that's what motivated me to start my channel because I'm like, you know, I want to bring these traditions down. And back then, they didn't have like all these cameras to like record and save these videos. So for people out there that don't, let's say have their parents still alive or their grandparents, I wanna like spread my tradition just to show them that. What people may have used to live like you live, but maybe for, for, you know, for whatever reason, as they grew older, they stopped doing it. You know, you you, you kind of lose those those recipes. You lose those traditions. Yeah. Or you you kind of make it a lot easier for people to reconnect with that. Oh yeah. 100%. You know, in a, in the in much the same way that Ro does with her and her mother. Mm -hmm. You know, you're kind of showing people that 
on your own. I think yeah. that that's that's really phenomenal. It's one of the reasons why. Yeah. You know, it's it's great to have you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm yeah. so glad to be here. Thank you so yeah. much for uh, taking the time to come on the show. Of course, anytime. We had a great chat. Yes. And now I'm starving. <laughs> oh, I'm really so starving. If you want to get the bread, she's got the olive oil in her glove. I might go downstairs and get well, a chicken collar. Right now, but. <laughs> yeah, bring that olive oil. I'll go get a piece of bread. Oh, the focaccia downstairs has yep. been elevated to an incredible height. All right. Oh, sorry. See, I'm right yeah. back to talking about <laughs> um, we just, no, no.